for these two to meet up. Now they do as round one is underway. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. And a big right hand comes crashing home from Tyson. Took a shot, now he gets the left. Covers up nicely, gets rid of his opponent's body shot. Teddy, you buy a ticket to a George Foreman fight, clearly you want to see one thing. Yeah, you want to see a knockout, and you're going to see power. And you know you're going to see the ability to catch somebody on both ends, because as dangerous as Foreman is, and as intimidating as he can be on the offensive end, he can be exploited that much on the defensive end. He leaves himself open. See, that's some fine defense right there. I love that block by Mike Tyson. Throughout your training career, what did you consistently feel more comfortable with? Training the shorter guy against the taller guy or the taller guy against the shorter guy? Well, you can't teach tall. You know what? That's there or not. I love to have those kind of advantages physically. You just have to make sure that you teach him to fight tall. Keeping his hands up, getting rid of his opponent's offense. A well-placed left hand up top. Snapping hook by Mike Tyson. Very nice work to the head. The right hand landed. Mike Tyson's left landing well. Off to the side, a little swing and a miss going upstairs. Last 10 seconds of this first round. Mike Tyson's hit by that power shot. End of round one. Well, we've seen this before, a fighter with a bad cut and sometimes a fighter that now has a much greater sense of urgency. Yeah, right now, if he was gambling, if he was in a casino, he's rolling the dice, he's hoping to come up with seven. <laughs> oh, what a hook upstairs! Crushed by a huge uppercut. Nice work with the overhand right. Able to land another power shot early on here, Teddy. Does he have to worry about trying to keep up this pace? No, I don't think so. If he keeps at this pace, he's not going to be around to worry. There are different kinds of power punchers, Teddy. Some are sharp and accurate. Some are thudding and impactful. Where does George Foreman lie on that scale? A bludgeoning type puncher. A guy that you have a headache for about a week. He hits you with such stunning punches that it starts to just break you down as time goes on. But either way, he intimidates you with the force of the punch, with the effect of the punch, and the knowledge that he's in front of you with that ability. You know, we're early in this fight, but Foreman's energy may come into question soon. He's throwing a lot of punches, Teddy. Yeah, and his mental energy, too. I'm wondering if he's getting a little discouraged that his opponent is not showing a lot of effect from all those shots. Just 10 seconds to go here in the second round. Left to the body. George Foreman's nailed by a huge uppercut. Okay, listen. When he misses you with a punch, counter, counter. Listen, I'm not gonna stand here and watch you do the shot. You understand me? This is the white now. You're winning this fight. Just keep doing what you're doing. You got this. Just, just keep doing what you're doing. Keep your hands moving and keep busy. Right? And you'll beat him for the punch. And round number three is underway. Foreman crushes home a left. Tyson's got to be feeling the impact of that uppercut.
but doubling up on the jab by George Foreman. Nice work, Tyson with the hook. He takes a shot and then commits to giving one right back. Foreman's on the wrong end of a destructive uppercut. Mike Tyson's right hand working well that time. He scored well. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. What a damaging blow. Nice hook upstairs. Targeted uppercut. This is really solid defense by Mike Tyson. You see how he has his arms up in that peekaboo position, but by doing so, he's not allowing any of his opponent's punches to get in. Parries that punch intended for the head. Ten seconds to go in this third round. And this round comes to an end. Two chairs. Every time you throw that chair, I want to see you land that over here, all right? Start of round number four. Mike Tyson's well-skilled plan has earned him every round on your scorecard, Teddy. Yeah, he hasn't always been the aggressor, but he's definitely been the more effective puncher, landing the clean shots. There's the headshot, but he parries it away. Tyson's in a good rhythm defensively here. Teddy, what is that, a credit to his ability to anticipate? You know, also, it's the teaching. Let's give the trainers credit. Of course, let's give his background of the amateurs credit, but he learned how to get away from punches. This is technique that was taught to him. How about that exchange? Goes up top with a right hand. right to the body if there was a baseball umpire around he'd call that a strikeout by George Foreman Foreman's putting forth a great combination there and he just holds on there reaching the halfway mark of this round Hits him in the mug with the right. Turns over that hook and he does damage upstairs. Good return fire that time. That's a forceful two punch combo by Mike Tyson. Keep your distance. What a chin. Can you believe the shots this guy's absorbing? And more importantly, can his opponent believe it? You know what? You want to hit a guy, so you figure that that's a good thing, that's an encouraging thing. This is a case where his opponent might get discouraged just by seeing his guy take those kind of shots. Hands up, hands up. Tyson's thump by a left hand. Boy, he was damaged, but now he's defending himself well. Effective work with that flush overhand right. Oh, what an uppercut. That worked out really well. Throwing off the right hand after getting tagged like that. Halfway into round number five here. 
Keep your head moving. George Foreman, there it is. That's a great effort against Foreman right there. Really, to take down Big George like that, that is something. Foreman's up from the knockdown, but what we really want to look for is how he reacts in the coming moments of this fight. Each man able to land an uppercut. There's the hook. Very accurate two-punch combo by Mike Tyson. Good shot to the head with that right hand. Oh, a big shot comes home for him. Oh, this is going to be close. He may be able to survive the round, but he has gone down now. One, two, three, four, five. It's over. The fight is over. George Foreman's a knockout victim. He couldn't beat the count. Oh, that's a big win. That's a big win that's going to get everybody in the division's attention. Tyson's power ends this early. You see results like this sometimes from combination, but one shot, wow. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Have yourself a great evening. Ladies and gentlemen, we good evening. Look what we talked about. 15 rounds scheduled here in this much-anticipated fight, and we are underway with round number one. I like the way he went up top that time with the hook. Little head knocking with that right hand. Foreman's blocking ability is doing well for him there. Well placed hook there. He clinches when he gets to the inside. Hit the body. Takes a step back, then the counter punch by Mike Tyson. Very similar to what you see Floyd Mayweather do. You know, make a miss, pull that shoulder back, and then come right back with the counter. Right hand downstairs. Mike Tyson's hurt by a superb hook to the head. Good clean shot, returning fire. Well done by George Foreman. George Foreman's on the wrong end of a razor sharp hook. Halfway through round number one. Foreman's cracked by a shot upstairs. So he decides to go downstairs early on, and I think he'll be happy with that decision later on. Well, it tells you that he's a well-prepared fighter. His corner came in here with a good game plan. They understood what they had in front of him. A guy that's going to move a little bit. Start going downstairs, taking the air out of the tires, and later on, he'll be in front of you. Little head hunting with the left. Teddy, in this matchup of Tyson versus Foreman, what does George Foreman have to be careful of? Well, what he has to be careful of is that he allows Tyson in too close. I think George has to be ready to do it. George Foreman banged by a left hand. Solid. He goes down in the later stages of this round. He's going to try to survive it. Just what he needed, the bell to end that round. He was taking a lot of punishment there. Well, if he hit a bad driver, you know, he was a golfer, you say he has to have a short memory. Forget about it, there's another hole coming up. Well, you have to have a short memory right here as a fighter. The only thing is, you better get some advice to go out there because you don't want to hit that fairway the same way. Good flush shot upstairs. Right from the start, he's throwing the power punches and landing it. I think he has a date he wants to get to it. Foreman's jacked up by an uppercut. Scored well up top.
Foreman's almost looking foolish that time he missed so badly. Too many Halfway through this down. round. Teddy asked for how Mike Tyson made his way to upstate New York to be with you and Customato. He got himself into some trouble to make his way up there. He had been arrested somewhere, I'm not sure the number, close to 30 times by the time he was 11 years old. And during that time, one of the guards was a former fighter. Actually, his name was Bobby Stewart. And when he found out, when Tyson found that out, he asked him to teach him a little boxing. And as he developed, Stewart called up myself and Customato and asked us to get involved. Foreman's banged by a big uppercut. Mike Tyson's right hand. George Foreman's hurt from that. Teddy, I think he's going to go down. I think he's going to go down after getting tagged right there. He doesn't know where to go. I mean, he's like a guy that's caught in a hailstorm. He's trying to get to the other side of the street, but he just doesn't know where it is now. A clean, crisp right hand by Mike Tyson. And we come to the end of the round. Now that he's back in the corner, we get a close-up look. Foreman's cut even looks worse. And it's up to the fighter now, Joe, for his attitude not to change. You know, we can look at it, and we can say, wow, that cut looks worse. The fans can look at it and say that. But the fighter must be steady, the same attitude, as though he doesn't have a cut. Otherwise, he has no chance of winning this fight. Solid left hand to the head. Takes one, but gives one. Good work by George Foreman. Able to block that away. It was targeted for his head. Up top with the right hand. And coming upon the halfway mark of this three-minute round. Sensational punching by George Foreman. Foreman's acting like a desperate man right now. He was stunned earlier. Now it's bombs away. Yeah, he's hoping to catch him. And when you're hoping to catch him, usually hope goes out the window. Oh, he just ate a big uppercut right there. He had big, big shot comes crashing home. And for the second time tonight, he goes down. Unable to get up and continue on. Ladies and gentlemen, and just like that, Tyson's thunder rains down on him with a knockout victory. Well, one of Einstein's theories was E equals mass times speed. This was fist, hits chin, and out he goes. For Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitore. Always enjoy you too. Ladies and gentlemen. Well, good evening, everybody, and we welcome. Get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about. It's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. Good exchange. He fires back. And now he's targeting upstairs. Wow, two of the best power-punching heavyweights of any generation now. Iron Mike Tyson facing off against big George Foreman. Give me something to look for. How do you distribute your power? That's what I'm going to give you. And what is effective in that situation with that particular guy? George Foreman has a really good uppercut. Tyson, coming in the shorter guy, he is vulnerable to that punch. Huge left from Big George. Oh, he just misses with that headshot. Nice work, the left hand to the head. Good flush shot upstairs. George Foreman's 
feeling the effects now of that hook. A good block by Mike Tyson. Final 10 seconds of round number one. Targeting that belt line with the right hand. A solid uppercut by George Foreman. You can almost see it just by the way a fighter sits down on their stool at the end of a round. As we come to the end of this round, you can tell that he's full of confidence and he can't wait to get right back out there and continue doing what he's doing. Well, you're right. The first thing that I noticed is his back's not leaning against the corner pad. You know, that's a defeated fighter. That's a fighter. He don't want to go back. Something bad happens. So, you know, he's leaning back like that. You have to pick him up from the stool. He's got all his weight forward. He can't wait to get going. You know that he's positive. You know that he had a good round. And now he scores well with a straight right. How about that left hand? And he returns on that exchange. He missed that uppercut. Now your mentor, Customato, became Mike Tyson's legal guardian. Going back 30 years prior to that, he had Floyd Patterson, who at the time became the youngest heavyweight champion. Were there parallels that Cus would make between Floyd and Mike? There were similarities. Floyd coming from Brooklyn, Tyson came from Brooklyn. Floyd had some problems as a youth on the street. Of course, Tyson had a lot of problems. They both could punch, they both had speed, and they were both guys that boxing gave them a chance to get off the street. Actually gave them a chance to have a life. Wow, a big flush blow, the left hand by Mike Tyson. Right there, Mike Tyson was able to score well with the hook. Another huge shot comes in early on in this fight from him. Well, he understood that his opponent, Joe, was a slow starter. He's jumping right on him, taking advantage. George Foreman's on the bad end of a flush, solid hook. And now he brings the left hand upstairs. And this round comes to an end. It is a round that was highly entertaining. These guys really put forth quite an effort. Well, they both have high engines. They have motors that never stop going. Little head hunting never hurt. Does it with the hook. He missed with that head shot. Right to the head with that right. Foreman's the kind of boxer that wants to do just that. Find the target, get the combination working, land both punches. He gets off with a combination up top. Scores well to the head with the right hand. Took a shot, now he gives a left. Mike Tyson's hand speed is right now the difference. Teddy, you got faster hands, you're halfway home. Yeah, that's a great, great asset to have, to be able to do that. But there is a way to negate it, to counter it, and that's to time the punches. Timing can beat speed. A freight train uppercut by George Foreman. Hitting his mark there, going upstairs. You got this. this. Lands flush with the two-punch combo by George Foreman. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. Tyson's able to avoid that punch. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. And that's the end of round three.
The beginning of round four, a chance to look at the scorecards. And Teddy, you like what he's done so far early, a clean sweep of all three rounds. Yeah, a couple of the rounds were close, but on the inside, when both of them had their chance to separate a little bit, he was the one who made the right decision to punch. Mike Tyson blocking that punch. Tyson with a powerful left hand. Scored well up top. Firing off the uppercuts. Great exchange. Tyson's been having great success with these combinations, Teddy. Well, there's a reason for it. He's using his jab to start it. And then he's letting the punches go. He's letting their hands follow. Looks to the head. And just grabbing on to his opponent. Not able to land the headshot. 90 seconds to go here in this round. Very accurate with the overhand right. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. What's up? Right hand by Mike Tyson. George Foreman's putting his punches together now. That's a nice combination. A solid true uppercut by George Foreman. Joe and Teddy with you here in between rounds. A round in which, boy, he really just dominated his opponent. Teddy, he's got to think things could be coming to a sensational ending for him when he gets off the stool here. Well, he's showing that to you right now. I'm looking at him right now, and he's starting to get up. There's a couple seconds left. There's probably five seconds left before he has to get up, and he's getting up early. That shows you right what you're talking about. He can't. He's chomping at the bid. He's confident. Teddy, a Mike Tyson left hook. Punches. Where's it come from? Well, it comes from everywhere. I mean, he wants to make sure that he annihilates you. So he puts everything into it. Shoulder snap, body, back, everything. What a big shot. And he is down. He is down for the first time tonight. So big George Foreman able to get up after that knockdown and now a real challenge in front of him. Now the challenge right now is really the opposite of any challenge that he's ever faced before. Usually the challenge is how to get rid of a guy. You know, how did you see that? Oh, and now the real test. Can he get up after going down a second time? Foreman's still in a tough spot here. Don't get fooled just thinking he beat the count and everything's fine. And I'm not so sure that he can grab. So what you got to do now if you're a trainer, the way you taught him in the gym is you don't want to go grab because you might leave yourself open. Move your head when he comes to you, then you grab him. Tyson with a block punch. Oh, good exchange there. Trying to erode away that body with the combination punching. End of the round. So he scores the knockdown and now heads back to his corner. Teddy, do you ever have to calm a guy down after he scored a knockdown? That's a really great point because a lot of times that can be the turning point, but not for your guy that scored the knockdown, for the other guy. Because sometimes when you score a knockdown, you start to think it's going to be an easy night. And you forget what you knew when you came in. That wasn't going to be an easy night. You're going to have to bring all the tools out of the tool shed. And it's important 
to remember that. George Foreman's got to prove a few things here. Number one, he's got to prove to his opponent that he's on good ground after being knocked down in the last round. But he's also got to prove it to the referee, too. Yeah, he does. And his corner. Because his corner, I just noticed, they put that towel over their shoulder. So they know the condition their fight is in. They know their responsibility. And they're ready to act on it. Very nice work from both men. They each got a shot in. Tyson's is being smart. Don't be smart. Look at that. George Foreman's night could be over here. This could be the end. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So now the question becomes, after that knockdown, and he has gotten up, how does he survive? So one of the ways he survives is if he's been taught, have good habits, have good fundamentals been put there. You're going to find out right now, he needs them right now. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own, a left hand scores. Able to cover up. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Foreman's down. He may soon be out. This fight could be over. One, two, three, four, five. And it's all over. Tyson's gunned down yet another opponent. A knockout victory. Mike Tyson, the power that we saw throughout the night, building a lead on your scorecard, now ends the night with a knockout victory. And it begins the next night, the next dawn, the dawn of the new beginning. More money. Knockouts, ring money. Alongside Teddy Atlas. Ladies and gentlemen. Good evening, everybody. Round number one is now underway. All the talk is done. It is simply time to fight. Accurate shot, straight right hand comes in. Defensively, I'm assuming the taller fighter in this matchup tonight really has to be conscious of protecting his body, Teddy. You know, Joe, that's a great point. We think about the taller guy only being vulnerable to the chin if the shorter man gets in, but if you're tall, there's a lot of long and usually lean body to attack. Gotta feel that right there. He was just tagged by a big uppercut. And yet another big shot comes in. Oh, an explosive headshot there. He is down. One, two, three, four, five. George Foreman's trainer is thrilled with this. He gets up off the canvas. Now he wants to see how he'll react. One for you now, he says. Right back with the left hand. You can see he's trying to score up top, but off the mark there. Gets rid of that. It was intended for his head. Double jab right to the face. Good body shot. The right hand came home. Keep your distance. Foreman's rocked by a huge hook to the head. A solid left hand by Mike Tyson. Good flush shot upstairs. And now we got a fight. He fires back a right hand of his own. Teddy, you gotta like this because he's using that jab the way you like him to. Especially when you're being aggressive. You walk in, you want to walk in where the guy can't see you coming. That jab blinds your opponent. George Foreman just coming out here after being knocked down in the last round. Teddy, what are some of the things you look for that will tell you he's on steady ground, that he looks fine? Well, the first thing I look for 
is the base, the foundation. I mean, you look at a house, you want to see and you want to make sure that that basement is solid, there's cinder blocks there. You know, you don't want to see that upper floor waving a little when there's a wind. You're looking at his legs. You want to make sure that they're steady, they're firm. Tyson's punch didn't come close. George Foreman is such a big physical presence, Teddy, in the ring, almost a hulking presence, and it really aligned with his style in the ring offensively. It was like wrecking ball wide shots. Yeah, wrecking balls work good when you're knocking over an old building, a tenement that's standing in front of you, but the wrecking ball, it could just swing into the air and hit nothing if you have a slick guy. So it works both ways, you're right. And what you're basically saying is, yeah, he's dangerous, but he's a little crude. Mike Tyson's impressing the judges and himself with that right hand. Finish with a hook! Hit the body! A precise hook by Tyson, he showed us. Look at that combination by George Foreman. He scored well after being hit himself. And now he's targeting upstairs. Good block. Accuracy an issue there. Didn't land that straight right hand. Last 10 seconds. Flush right hand to the head. And they come to the end of the round. Joe and Teddy with you ringside. And boy, oh boy, are they putting on a show tonight here. Well, kind of what you expected. These styles kind of told you that this is what you were gonna get. Scored well upstairs with the right hand. That's exactly what he wanted to do, backing him up against the ropes. To the head he goes with a left hand. Let's see some more head movement. Iron Mike with an iron right. That's a big uppercut that just crashed home. Work the body. A well-placed hook from Mike Tyson. Back to the body. He tried to nab him up top, but was unable to connect. Halfway through this round here. Mike Tyson's right in the way of that hook to the head. Oh, that had a hurt. That is Boxing 101. A nice, crisp combination by Mike Tyson. Teddy, I don't think he's got visions of sticking around too long. He's landed power punches early. Yeah, he wants to make it a quick night's work. Good right hand. Targeting each other, the exchange was something special. Good effective work with that straight right hand. Oh, you see him with the left of the head there? Last 10 seconds of round number three. And that's the end of round three. Mike Tyson's power has been the biggest difference in this fight so far, Teddy. As we start round number four and we take a look at your scorecard, he's up two rounds to one. Yeah, because of that knockdown, that was the difference. But it's still close enough for his opponent, just using his jab, fundamentals, the things that he has to do to still get back in it. Body shot, left hand. Iron Mike with an iron. And bang, and away he goes. Well, we know he survived earlier, but now he goes down for a second time. Tyson's power just much too much for his opponent. Another knockout for him. It may have been scheduled to go longer, but he just rescheduled it. Done. Over. Fiend. Knockout victory.
This match is up with any of the great punches throughout this. Ladies and gentlemen. We welcome you here. To well, they've been waiting for this moment, and now they get it. Round one underway. Oh, he took some damage, but he gave some back with the right hand. An accurate left by George Foreman. George Foreman's now feeling the after effects of being rocked by a huge hook to the head. Who do you think has the mental edge in a matchup like this of boxer versus brawler? Well, it depends how it starts. You know, if the boxer can start and he can control landscape, he can be on the outside getting his way, getting a little cooperation where the brawler's walking into his punches and then tie up on the inside, he has the advantage. Good step back counter punch there. That is a serious counter punch right there. Look at this, another power punch able to land. We're early on in this fight, he's going for it. Yeah, you wonder if he's got a call waiting outside. Foreman's feeling the sting of that big uppercut. Able to land the hook to the head. And he engages in the clinch. Huge uppercut by Tyson. A fierce jab by Mike Tyson. Oh! Ruined in one instance. Just done. Fight over. So that's all it took. One good shot. George Foreman's career is a major speed bump tonight. Well, there were doubts about his beard coming in, and those doubts were realized. It was a good one indeed. And for Teddy Atlas, I'm Joe Tessitor. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next time at the fights. Well, good evening, everybody, and we good welcome evening. you ringside. Joe Tessitore alongside. Everybody's been waiting for these two to meet up. Now they do as round one is underway. You think in George Foreman this is the most heavy-handed fighter that Mike Tyson's ever faced? Oh, without a doubt. And more importantly, a guy that could throw a mirror at him, a mirror of intimidation, where Tyson tries to melt you, or Foreman can shoot that right back at him and make him into a snowman. Nice solid left hand scored by Mike Tyson. George Foreman's got a bad cut now that's opened up on his cheek. A little head hunting with the right. Gets rid of that body shot. Both men digging in with uppercuts. They trade shots. He comes back with a right hand. Reaching the halfway mark of this round. Foreman's the victim of a powerful hook. Well played, straight right hand. Tyson's at his best when the combinations are landing. He scored well there with that combo. He just missed that shot up top. Foreman with a big uppercut. Iron Mike lands the left good. Very nice work to the head. The right hand landed. Rock'em, sock'em, robots right from the start here, Teddy. No defense, just pure offense. Now that's offense by George Foreman. Combination to the head. Nice work, nice work. Here we go. Round two is underway. Tyson's getting himself into the mix now, landing that left hand. Yeah! Double jab by Mike Tyson. 
That's a flush shot, banking away those body shots with the left hand. What a trap he just set, and he lands a nice counterpunch. Yeah, that's the old cats with a ghost trick there. You know, you're there one time, you give him a little shade, you know, a little shadow, and then he throws at you, you pull back, bang, come right back with your ult. Get in there! Teddy, in terms of pure strategy, facing Mike Tyson, what can you take advantage of? Well, he needs to be set to punch, so obviously you don't want to stand right in front of him. You want to give him angles. You want to give him some lateral movement. Keep him off balance. Keep his feet moving. If his feet are moving, his hands usually are not coming at you. You see, he comes over the top with that right hand. A real solid shot. And there it is, coming with the jab by George Foreman. Goes up top with a right hand. Able to land another power shot early on here, Teddy. Does he have to worry about trying to keep up this pace? No, I don't think so. If he keeps at this pace, he's not going to be around to worry. Ten seconds remaining in this round. And that's the end of round two. Foreman's cut man is going to earn his pay for sure. That is a bad gash. And I'm wondering what he's using in there. You know, you can only use certain things, Avatine, Adrenaline, and Thrombin. I'm wondering if he's using legal things right now because that's the kind of cut that tempts you to use crazy glue. Mike Tyson with a big right hand. That's a heck of a shot, that hook by Foreman. He got all into that one. That was a solid uppercut. That is a classic Tyson uppercut. George Foreman's got a cut. We can see that he's bleeding from his mouth, and that can be a real problem. People don't realize it, but that can be a big, big problem. Crashes home with a hook. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. Tyson's done a good job there offensively scoring with that left hand. He's winning the fight to me based on his overall speed. He's just the faster, quicker fighter, and it's making it so that he's able to employ his ways and get the best of his opponent. Oh, he has that physical asset, no doubt about it. You can see it. But he has to be careful that he doesn't get carried away. He doesn't get reckless with that speed. That's a shocker to see George Foreman hurt like that. Hey, if I'm in the... Oh, and there you go. Good shot. What a nice uppercut. Foreman's down. That's the danger of that punch. It comes from below where you can get your legs under it, and you don't see it. One, two, three, four, five. Big George Foreman steadies himself, and that six-foot-four frame is back upright after the knockdown. That right hand over the top lands flush. Ten seconds to go in this round. Three minutes gone by in this round. Keep him in front, okay? Don't let him move around too much. Put the ring on. Tyson's enjoying a big lead here, Teddy, and we talk about this often as we begin round number four up three to zip on your scorecard. When you have scored a knockdown that early in a fight, a real hole for your opponent to try to overcome. Yeah, because now he has to start taking chances that maybe weren't in the game plan. And as he takes chances, gets a little reckless, and as you're seeing, gets caught more. Foreman's out to show everybody that he's fine. But we saw what happened in the last round. He was knocked down in that last round. Does he have to prove something to himself as well as proving something to everybody in this arena? Well, that's the right question. So he's got to revisit his memory banks a little bit and know that he's already proven it to himself. He's been in this position before. So he has to regain that confidence and understand that he can deal with this. He's done it before. seconds 
to go in round number four. Zones in on that overhand right. And you see what he can do when he sends that right to the head. A thundering right hand from George Foreman. Iron Mike lands the left good. Good defensive skill. He just looks exhausted to me right now. Foreman's accuracy is non-existent. This guy cannot punch a solid target right now. No, but what this shows, he's missing so many shots. We always think about the damage done when they land. This is showing you the damage. Big, big shot he just scored with. Big George damage here. Will he be able to go forward? So now the question becomes, after that knockdown, and he has gotten up, how does he survive? So this is where instincts kick in. You got to start moving that head automatically right now. You don't want to stay in the middle. George Foreman's bang to the noggin. Look at that. The hook came home with ease. by an uppercut. Needs to improve that accuracy. Missed with the headshot. There's that overhand right. Still plenty of time to work here in round number five. A minute and a half to go. Doing great. Nice block by four. Committing to the work downstairs with the left. Nice block. Final 10 seconds of this fifth round. And round five comes to an end. Foreman's defense is going to need to shine when he gets back out there. I mean, just look at the close-up of that cut we're seeing. Yeah, he's got to use his legs. You're right, Joe. He's got to get out there and buy some time for those medicines to work. He has a new round in front of him, but I don't know that there's any new hope. He's been down numerous times tonight, including that last round. You never know what a person's capable of when they're pushed to the brink. But this would be very unlikely. It would be spectacular. Do you see any way in which he can take... in prime form power surge here knockout winner mike tyson's fitting end to a very strong night for him there is a business component to this game here this boxing game and the business component is yeah you got to win but you want to win spectacularly you want to get people good evening everybody alongside 15 rounds scheduled here in this much-anticipated fight, and we are underway with round number one.
Gore's up top with a left. George Foreman's right hand scores well that time. Fighting fire with fire sometimes can work, but can it work under circumstances like this when a power puncher is going up against George Foreman? Yeah, it can. In other words, you have to have a little defense to go with that ability to generate fire, or in this case, power. What a great job. He gave one right back in return. Nice work by George Foreman. Keeps his hands up defensively, protecting the head. Halfway through round number one, a good block. He gives as well as he takes. You saw it on that exchange. His opponent wanted the body. He wouldn't give it to him. Oh, and he returns fire with a left hand. Hits him in the mug with the right. So many times you hear of an early round where they're just feeling each other out. No way. Not these guys. Straight to action. Well, if they can keep this up, they're both going to have headaches, but we're going to have a special one on our hands. George Foreman's feeling the impact of that powerful hook. Final 10 seconds. And we come to the end of the round, and you know his trainers got to love that because they stress, hey, go out there and be smart with what you're doing. He was very smart about when to throw and how to land it. And that's the key in the sweet science, placing your punches, as you said, making them count. George Foreman's getting back to basics, a good solid jab. Scored well with that right hand to the body. is far off the target. Stay away from those. Those uppercuts that George Foreman was able to land on Joe Frazier and winning the heavyweight title, they were lifting Joe Frazier off the ground. You know, Joe Frazier, because of his style, as terrific as he was, he was made to order for George Foreman. Halfway through round number two. Unload. He digs in with a left hand to the body. A good block by Mike Tyson. George Foreman jammed by an uppercut. Nice strike after catching one by George Foreman. Great hook to the head that time. Up in your head, kid. Committing to the body work now. He lands the right hand. George Foreman's got to find a way to land more of these punches. It's okay to throw punches, but not if they're just drifting off to space. Absolutely, and space is it. He's in space. He's too far away. He has to get the right range. What impact from that uppercut by George Foreman. Tried to land that upstairs and was off the mark. Right to the belt line. Good work with the uppercuts. Nice job there. Protecting his head well with his guard. Tyson's hurt by a big shot. Breathe. Wow, is he defensively sound. And he ties up on the inside. Not able to connect with the uppercut. 
halfway through this round. He took a shot, but he came back with a right hand of his own. Use the ring, use the ring. George Foreman still shaking after feeling that uppercut. And now he digs in with that hook to the body. And right from the start, he's throwing the power punches and landing them. I think he has a date he wants to get to it. Tyson's right hand did a nice job that time. That worked well for him. Keep it going. George Foreman's proving to be elusive. We count down the final moments of this round. And this round comes to an end. Beginning of round number four. Teddy, the way your scorecard reads, he's up three rounds to zip. Good, accurate punching, earning him that lead. Yeah, very conservative. Hasn't wasted anything. But, as you just touched on, has made everything count. What the hook? Nice work by Mike Tyson. He was looking for an opportunity. He got it with that counter punch. Yeah, he stepped to the side. You know, a lot of times you talk about using your jab to set up a shot. He used his legs. Stepped to the side, got that opportunity. Foreman's hit by Big Shot. And he goes down for the first time tonight. His opponent didn't think it was going to be that easy. Big George Foreman back up after the knockdown. George Foreman's effort has been admirable, but I don't think he's getting the results he would like to get here. He's tiring himself. Yeah, what I think is starting to happen here, Joe, we saw him throwing a lot of punches, but not real effective punches. I'm wondering now, he's ahead right now in this part of the fight, but I'm wondering if he's getting discouraged because it didn't have the effect on his opponent he wanted it to. He comes with a straight right hand. <laughs> Must be the punch of the day. Both guys bringing home uppercuts. Tyson's doing good damage with the combination punching. Well, right there is a good example of the benefit of combination punching. You miss the first or the second, the third and the fourth, they land. And that has some bite to it, that right hand by Mike Tyson. That was nice. He just drew the punch from his opponent and then a good counter by George Foreman. Yeah, like running through the rain without getting wet. Beautiful. That's a fierce left hand that landed by Mike Tyson. So he scores a knockdown in the last round. Now he gets to settle down and gather himself a bit. Do you go after it? Do you get super aggressive here having had your man hurt? Or do you still have to employ a certain amount of caution? It's kind of like being at the carnival. You know, you just, you just hit the bullseye and you got that big, big stuff.